Okay, so we're going to today work through the example problem from chapter eight at the uh, end of the slides. So let's take a look at what some of the important pieces are uh, in that problem. So the first is we have the demand equation, which in this case is going to be Q equals 240 minus P. So we're going to take Q equals 240 minus P. So that is our demand equation. So I'm going to write a D here to indicate. The next equation is our supply equation. So to find that, all we need to do is just look at the slides and we find that it's Q equals 2P. So that is our supply equation. So the first step in computing any taxation problem is you need to first determine the equilibrium quantity. So to do that, the first step of the process is we're going to want to determine the equilibrium price. Then once we have the equilibrium price, we can determine the equilibrium quantity. So now let's set our demand and supply equations equal to one another. So 240 minus P equals two minus P. So we are then going to add P to one side. That's going to give us 240 equals three P. We are then going to divide by three divide by three, and once we do that, we are going to find that P equals 80. So the price in this case, the equilibrium price is $80. So we have our equilibrium price. So now we need to plug that in to both of the equations to allow us to get the equilibrium quantity. So, Let's plug that into both equations, just as kind of a good double check. So we're going to plug Q equals 240 minus 80. And remember, this is the demand. And we're going to also plug that into supply. So for the supply equation, Q equals 2 times and when you solve both equations, you find that Q equals 160 and Q equals 160. So excellent. So you have the price equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity for the equation prior to taxation. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to determine what the additional tax is gonna look like when it's added to the equation. So if they tell you that the tax is on buyers, what you're going to do then is you're going to add the tax on to the price of the good. So we have the demand equation, 240 minus P. So to add the tax, all we're going to do is take 240 minus P plus T. So that is our tax in this equation. So now what we're going to do is we need to find the equilibrium price. So the next step is we're going to basically find the new equilibrium. So all we're going to do is we are going to take 2P, so the supply equation, and set it equal to 240 minus P plus T. So set supply and demand equal to one another. When we solve for that equation, we are going to find that P is equal to 80 minus T over 3. 
because remember this tax is not a specified dollar amount. A tax. So 80 minus T over three. So the next step of the process, so now we have the equilibrium price, we need to find the equilibrium quantity. So what we're going to do then is we are going to take the equilibrium price that we just found and plug that into both the demand and the supply equation. Uh, in this case, because we know uh, that this is going to be the, uh, because we know that we're not really going to need to plug it into both equations, um, I am just going to choose to do it to the supply equation. So we have the supply equation Q equals 2P. So we're going to replace the 80 minus T over 3 into the P on this equation. So let's do that. So now we're going to have Q equals 2 times 80 minus. And in this case, this is where you need to be really careful because this 2 right here, notice that if you have that 2, you need to make sure you do that to every piece of the equation. So what I mean by that is, you not only need to do that to the 80, but you also need to do that to the T over three. So what we're gonna have is something like this, 160 minus two T over three. So this is going to be our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to actually determine what the uh, equilibrium price and quantity would be and what the tax. So we have our equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. So tax revenue is simply determined by you just take the tax times the quantity of the goods sold. So tax times quantity. So that is how you determine tax revenue. So the part, previous part where we determined the price and quantity, so that's, that's the most difficult part that we've done. But now, what if we want to determine what tax revenue is at different tax amounts. So why don't we first do it for, um, let's say the tax was $0. So there was no tax. So we need to find Q first. So the really cool thing here is we're actually going to use this equation, the tax equation, and we're just gonna take that down here. And all we're gonna say is Q equals 160 minus 2 times 0 over 3. And effectively in this case, all we're going to have is so in that case, it's just going to be 0. There's not really any sort of piece that we need to do. We know that we're going to have the quantity of 160. So Q equals 160. And tax revenue, if there is no tax, is going to be zero. Now for 30. So once again, we're gonna take this same equation and let's plug in Q equals one minus two times 30 over three. So we're going to process that and we are going to find that Q equals 140.
So at a tax of $30, quantity is equal to 140. And to find tax revenue, so all we're going to do is we are effectively going to take the $30 tax and times 140, and we're going to get a tax revenue of 4,020. So I would highly encourage you to complete the next problem and see if you can work through that on your own. Um, and the next problem as well, um, those are fairly similar, as well as the final problem, which works through deadweight loss. And so just to really briefly recap deadweight loss, Deadweight loss is just that little triangle that we have. When there is a tax added, so let's say that this is the tax. So this is our new tax that was added. So deadweight loss is going to be this a triangle right here. This rectangle right here, this is government revenue. So the pink rectangle is government revenue. The blue triangle is deadweight loss. So to determine deadweight loss, we need to use a formula that gives us the ability to figure out what the area of a triangle is. So to do that, we use the one half base times height formula. And in this case, the one half base is gonna be quantity times the price. So that's kind of the standard formula you're gonna have variations of that formula to figure out deadweight loss. In the example um, on the slides, the kind of unique thing about it is that we have to determine the change in quantity. So the change in quantity from before the tax to after the tax. So what that would look like is that would be one half old Q minus new Q. And then that would be multiplied by the tax, so the dollar amount of the tax. And that gets you to the deadweight loss of the tax, or in this case, D. W L. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please come to office hours or feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much. Cheers.